Hey there, welcome to the second episode of the Graco Pumpcast. I'm your host, Brendan Forrest, and I am joined here today with Dan Burkott. Dan is Graco's Industrial Process Product Manager. Today, we're going to be discussing when and why to use plastic diaphragm pumps. So Dan, what plastics are typically used in fluid sections of diaphragm pumps, and can you give us a quick description of each? Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Brendan. Yeah. Um, when we look at plastics that are used in, in diaphragm pumps, we're typically talking about four materials. We're talking about standard polypropylene, which we're going to look at when we're doing generic chemical transfer. It's by far the most common plastic used in diaphragm pumps the world over. It makes up about 35% of the worldwide pumps sold. Um, again, very common for, for standard chemical transfer. The next is PVDF, also known by the trade name Kynar. This is used for highly concentrated chemicals or when strong oxidizers are present. So think bleach, for example. So very aggressive, very, very caustic chemical. It's hard on plastics. So we would look at a PVDF at that point. We also use conductive polypropylene. So whenever polypropylene is required, but there's a volatile atmosphere present, explosive atmosphere, think that way. Whenever we need a electrically conductive material, we have to use conductive polypropylene. It, it contains specifically a material called carbon black, which allows the plastic to become conductive at that point. These have ATEX ratings for worldwide use, and they also carry NEMA ratings for North America, which is very similar, but a little bit different. Um, the fourth is acetyl plastic, sometimes known by the trade name Delrin. This is a conductive plastic as well, generally used for volatile solvents. Most of your plastics are not solvent compatible. The solvent will in fact make them swell, uh, which obviously creates some problems. Acetyl or Delrin is very solvent resistant. Um, and so we use it specifically when we're pumping flammable fluids. There are some others, um, Calrez, for example, some different models of Kynar, generally not used in the pumping industry simply because they're very cost prohibitive. All right, so Dan, generally speaking, uh, what are plastic pumps used to transfer? So plastic pumps can be used to transfer just about anything, but I'm gonna hit a couple of, of key applications. First, you know, we can always talk about generic transfer. Whenever we're talking about materials other than, say, water or petroleum based products. But primarily, these are for chemical processing. You're going to see these on the process side of, of uh, the application, not necessarily on the waste. The reason for that is primarily cost. These do cost more than, say, a standard aluminum pump that you'll see for wastewater. Um, so you're going to see these on the process side, not necessarily the waste side. You'll see these in highly concentrated chemicals as well. We talked about the PVDFs, the Kynars for concentrated chemicals. You're never gonna be able to get a, a metallic pump in those applications because these materials are typically much too corrosive for metallic pumps. You'll see these in the semiconductor industry, which is generally high purity. Um, so you need a clean pump. You need something that can handle the very volatile chemicals that they, they use in that industry. We talked about acetyl or delrin solvent transfer. You see a lot of this in automotive, uh, in the paint, not necessarily the industry, but at the, the manufacturer level. So when somebody like General Motors gets done spraying one color, they will flush all of their lines with solvent before they can then use another color. That's where you'll use some of those pumps. Also with strong cleaning detergents, Anything that is really high on the acid level or the base scale of the pH, you need to use plastic. All right, sweet. So you um, you talked about how it, typically not on the waste side. Is there any other uh, things that you're not typically going to transfer with plastic pumps? Yeah. So you know, typically we're like I said, we're not going to we're not going to transfer straight wastewater. We may see some of these in chemical sump application where they're in an overflow sump or they're in a rain basin sump where there's really dilute chemicals present where we mm -hmm. still don't want to use uh, an aluminum or maybe a stainless steel pump. So you may see it in from that waste perspective, but for general waste water, you're not going to see these pumps. 
Part of that reason is they really weren't designed for highly abrasive material. We know that there's always particulate in sump water, which does tend to wear on a plastic pump. You also don't see these a lot in petroleum. Um, and it's not that they're not compatible, it's not that they won't work, but they can be prohibitively expensive, especially when an aluminum pump generally works just fine. We don't want to specify a polypropylene or even a Kynar pump at four or five times the cost of an aluminum pump when aluminum is more than adequate. Sure. Okay. Uh, so what uh, internal components are most commonly found in a plastic pump? So generally speaking, it's all about com chemical compatibility, of course, which is mm -hmm. why we would specify a plastic pump in general. So there are myriad materials available for these, but most commonly what you're going to see is you're going to see the PTFEs, of course, goes by the training Teflon. You're going to see FKM, also known as Viton, um, for more concentrated chemicals, possibly some high temperatures, uh, things of that nature. You'll also see some of your Santaprines and your hydrals, which are your thermoplastic elastomers, typically have less chemical compatibility. So you're going to see those used with lower chemical concentrations. What's nice about those materials is they're cheaper. It all, again, goes back to cost for the end user when it's all said and done. So we don't want to over-specify when we're talking about plastics and internal components as well. So we offer many options. What are the pros and cons of using a plastic pump? So I think the, the main pro is plastic pumps can be used for almost any application. Because they're so chemical resistant, you can use them all over the world and in just about any application. What's nice is they're also very corrosion resistant. Obviously, you have no metallic components in the fluid path, which is really important for some of these really aggressive caustic chemicals that will just eat up a metallic component, you know, sometimes overnight. Um, what's also nice is these pumps are really light and durable. This makes for a very portable pump if that's needed. Um, whereas you start talking about even an aluminum or a stainless, they are quite heavy, especially when you start getting up in size. Cons, if we look at polypropylene in particular, polypropylene is not inherently a UV stable material, which means that if it's placed outdoors, you're going to have some scaling of the material over the, the course of years, um, just breakdown due to the UV, unless there's a UV inhibitor added. Unfortunately, that also increases cost and it lowers chemical compatibility. So you don't see a lot of UV inhibitors being added to polypropylene. Now, you can move on to a, a, a PVDF or Kynar pump um, or even a conductive polypropylene pump, which are, do have UV stabilizers added, but they're quite expensive. So that's a downside there. There are also some low temperature considerations to be had when you're talking plastic pumps. Um, generally, you're going to get a polypropylene down to about, about the freezing point, um, Kynar, PVDF down to about 10 degrees F. Um, otherwise, you can start having some potential cracking problems uh, just due to, to the cold weather. So when you're uh, specking a plastic pump, are there any quality considerations to keep in mind? Yeah, great question. So you always want to work with a manufacturer that uses the highest quality materials they can get their hands on. Um, it's going to give you the best operational service life. Like I mentioned before, especially outdoors, you're going to want somebody who has a material that, even if it's not UV stabilized in the case of, of polypropylene, a better material is going to give you some better resistance. Um, and so instead of getting maybe two years out of the pump, you get five years out of the pump. Um, there's a lot of imported copies out there. Everybody, everybody is getting knocked off. And it's important to understand that they're not using the materials that we use domestically. Uh, the domestic manufacturers are doing a better job sourcing higher quality materials, and you're gonna get better operational service life because of that. You also wanna make sure that you're, you're partnering with a manufacturer that is using a thicker, heavier wall on the components and uh, a better grade, again, of material, especially with the fluid contact components, because if there happen to be some abrasive materials, again, we talked about chemical sump application, the better the material and the heavier the wall, the better abrasion resistance and the better service life you're gonna get out of the palm. 
All right, Dan, so the last question I had for you was, are there any environmental or sustainability type considerations to be had when you're selecting a plastic pump? Yeah, isn't this the topic du jour? I mean, this is this is what it's all about, especially in North America, um, the world over, but especially North America at this point. And I think part of that is you really want to select a manufacturer that is as vertically vertically integrated as possible. You know, such as a company like Graco that does the majority of the manufacturing in house. An example, prime example being plastic injection molding, which we do at Graco. What this does is it allows us to really have strict quality control over the components. And from a sustainability perspective, it allows us to really reduce the waste because we're controlling the quality from the quality of the material that we're choosing to the processes um, to the design. It allows us to really minimize the waste. And a lot of times this product, when it's wasted, it just goes straight to landfill. So by reducing that, we're really, we're really able to be a more sustainable partner um, for our customers. And also when it comes to pumps in general, I think it's important to partner with a manufacturer that's continuously investing in product innovation and that is driving toward process efficiency. Um, the key is less energy consumption at the manufacturing level, right? So the idea is to lower the carbon footprint and by really investing in that, those efficiencies, that just leads to energy reduction, energy consumption reduction, and again, a lower carbon footprint. Awesome, Dan, thanks for uh, taking some time to explain plastic pumps for us. Uh, so for more information, visit us at graco.com and be sure to follow us on LinkedIn. I uh, hope you all have a good day. Bye.